sorry about the changing light in this video. I had some technical issues, let's just say. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. So my spiritual roots and my religious background is not something that I've really gone into a whole lot here on the channel. It's something that I kind of mentioned when I was giving a, a rough spiritual religious timeline and just a, a rough kind of contour of my spiritual journey and um, back in my very first YouTube video that I ever made. I don't necessarily recommend going back and watching that video, it's pretty rough. I was very nervous, it was my first video that I ever actually really made. Uh, but I think that's the only place that I ever really talked about the fact that I was raised Catholic and what that meant to me and what that looked like and, and how that kind of evolved into where I am today. I, I'm sure it's something that I've mentioned in passing in videos, but I don't think I've really talked about it uh, at any great length. So I think first of all, I will say that I was raised Catholic in the sense that pretty much everyone the vast majority of people in Ireland, certainly my age and older, were raised Catholic. It was kind of by default. My parents, especially when I was quite young, they weren't going to church, they weren't going to mass, um, they were not, they didn't consider themselves to be particularly religious. And it was really just something that was imposed on me through school. Um, it was just part of the school curriculum. I went to a Catholic school, as most people in Ireland have and still do. And so it was something that I really didn't encounter until I was maybe about six, five or six years old was I think when they first started to kind of talk to us about Jesus and God and to incorporate religious education into our curriculum. I had definitely talked to my dad quite a lot about his cosmology and the nature of the universe and stuff like that. I was um, quite a precocious child who did like to ask questions about the nature of existence and um, what infinity meant and, and lots, lots of kind of abstract things like that. So me and my dad used to have these kind of conversations. So I probably had it instilled in me from quite a young age that um, my, my father certainly understood God or divinity to be uh, something quite vague and something that could not necessarily be explained by any figures of authority, that it was by nature something that we don't understand and so on. And for him, God is more about energy um, like the energy of the universe, as in like the energy that has created the universe and just kind of a ground of all being, rather than anything kind of more specifically Christian. And I don't really remember him ever talking to me about Jesus at all. I don't think, for him, I think Jesus is an historical figure who was kind of the original socialist in his eyes. And so he's kind of um, a figure whose values he respects and looks up to, rather than being like explicitly this kind of divine figure who was sent, like literally sent to earth to save our souls. I, that's definitely not the way that he sees it. So that would have been my grounding if we did have that conversation before it came up in school. Maybe we didn't until it came up in school. Like I don't really remember. Um, but I basically never really developed a relationship or a connection to Jesus or Mary. Uh, obviously Jesus is, I think especially in like evangelical, Christian groups, uh, Jesus, the focus on Jesus is really, really big. It's like all about your relationship with Jesus. In Catholicism, it's definitely less so. There is a lot of stuff about the Sacred Heart. Uh, the focus is maybe, well, it's there's a lot more focus on Mary, obviously, in Catholicism. So she was very much a figure as well that we focused on. And I'd say it was like almost evenly split, I would say, from my personal experience. But I just never really, um, I never caught the bug. Like I never really developed a serious excitement or interest in either of those figures. And I think, I suspect that's kind of for two kind of conflicting reasons. Um, one was that they just seemed very human to me, that to my mind, these were historical stories about just humans, like ordinary human beings. Um, and to my mind, there wasn't a lot of mystery or awe involved in, in these figures. And then on the other hand, they were a bit too perfect to be relatable. So they just weren't figures that really attracted me, that I ever developed a relationship to. Um, we never said the rosary at home. I did have a set of rosary beads, but saying the rosary was never something that I did. Um, so yeah, that was not really a thing. What I did develop, however, was a relationship with God, um, roughly speaking not a strong one and I didn't have any really strong perception of what God was, of what 
he or she looked like. I didn't even really have a particularly strong association with God being male, despite the fact that I was being raised Christian. I think in my head, God definitely was a kind of all father figure. Uh, but again, I think from my father's conversation with me, that wasn't a particularly strong association. It was clear that he didn't see God as being overtly male. And so that wasn't really something that I massively internalized. And I'm very grateful for that. I think that definitely helped my journey towards moving towards seeing divinity as being female predominantly in my eyes now, which is something that I've blogged about. And I may, may make more videos about like my, my journey with that and, and my thought process with, um, at this point, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the word, this is a bit of a, a side kind of tangent. I'm not a big fan anymore of the word goddess as an all encompassing kind of word for divinity because for some reason for me, it really takes me out of that sense of mystery. Um, and God really kind of reverberates for me. And this ties into what I'm gonna say now about, you know, my the development of my, of my spirituality and how my roots have really informed how I understand divinity now and my spiritual practice now. So goddess is something, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful word for me, but I have enjoyed using the word God sometimes, but I will still use feminine pronouns. If I'm ever using God, I will use feminine pronouns, like in an all encompassing way, as opposed to the kind of binary of goddess and God. Um, but I think that's a whole other video that I could make. I feel like I could make um, a follow-up video to the video that I made on um, gendering divinity way back in the day, uh, because I talked a bit there about like, the duality of, of God and goddess and, and so on and so forth. I could probably make another video on that actually. So I might, I'll make a note <laughs> to come back and do that at some point. So yeah, I, I definitely developed some sort of relationship with a divine experience, I would say even more than a figure. I definitely had experiences in church and they reminded me of experiences that I had in nature. And there was definitely something uh, developing there. And it was very much tied in with um, the aesthetics of the Catholic Church and particularly in, you know, really grand cathedrals and the smell of the incense and, and just that aesthetic um, really began to kind of weave itself into this experience that I did have sometimes that I was starting to associate uh, with religion and with um, piety and devotion. And um, in some ways, perhaps the reason that I am so fixated on silence uh, as a devotional act and as a means of tapping into the divinity of cosmos um, might be because I you know, grew up going to churches where sitting and praying in silence after taking communion was a really, a really vital part of, um, of our religious practice. So essentially what I'm saying is that while I didn't kind of carry any of the dogma of Catholicism with me, it never, it never really sat right with me. It never made a lasting impression on me in terms of my overt kind of beliefs and so on. Um, while that didn't really stick for me, there definitely are a lot of aspects of my experiences during that time that absolutely stayed with me and absolutely informed the way that I would develop later on as a spiritual person. And I think when I first came back to, so uh, in case you haven't heard this story before, um, age about 12, uh, I first became completely disillusioned with the, with the Catholic Church. It was quite a swift movement away from it in my mind. I think I just had a moment, I was experiencing depression for the very first time actually no, not the very first time, but I had had a couple of years of on and off depression and I was really sinking into probably the worst phase of my depression in my life so far. And I was kind of just at the, at the beginning of it. Unfortunately, it was gonna get worse. Um, but I was just on the cusp of, of that downward dip, which dipped its most when I was about 14. And I, um, I became really fixated on the idea that uh, suicides were supposedly sent to hell. And so it wasn't even like, it wasn't even a specifically a Catholic thing that I was kind of rallying against. It was like this understanding that I had about the Christian church in general. I, uh, somewhere along the line, picked up this idea that, you know, I, I learned that suicide was a mortal sin. 
and it just went against everything that I had learned about Christianity and liked about Christianity so far. The idea that those who suffer would be rewarded in the afterlife and so on. This made no sense to me whatsoever. It seemed to me like the just the ultimate um the just the ultimate punishment for already feeling miserable. Like if somebody is in so much pain in their kind of living life that they can no longer continue to go through that. The idea um, that that would be further punished was just so abhorrent to me that it was almost like a, just a turning point for me. It was like, that's it. I can no longer believe in a dogma that tells me that this is so. So in a strange way, it was actually this very sudden, very like, no, that's it, I'm done. Um, which is maybe how I do things because that's very much how I became vegetarian as well. It was very much just a, a snap moment. It was like a build up, build up, build up. And then just that one moment where I was like, you know what? No, <laughs> no more. Um, so I went then went through a phase of kind of atheism and, and just feeling really disillusioned with the idea of religion in general and thinking, well, um, I must have gotten this just completely wrong. Uh, if these people are wrong, if this big institution has just clearly got something wrong somewhere along the line, then is there anything divine? Is there such thing as God? And I um, I struggled with that for quite a while. But then I went into, and I discovered paganism and went through all of that in my late teens and, well, mid to late teens. So I would say when I was first experiencing um, and you know, exploring paganism, that I was very much looking to release and walk away from my Catholic upbringing. I had come to associate it with a very negative period of my life because I associated it with school. I associated with the deterioration of my relationship with my father, which I'm very happy to say is now completely kind of healed. And um, we really just had a bad kind of not even 10 years, but my adolescence was just not a good time for us. So I had a lot of negative associations with that period of my life. And I think it was very important to me. Uh, and maybe this is why I ended up going towards something uh, like, well, essentially I was practicing Wicca uh, in the first instance and considering myself a witch and exploring witchcraft and paganism and, and all of those kind of related kind of uh, practices and perhaps it really was like the most extreme rebellion that I could find um, and at the same time maybe something a little bit familiar because the ritual and the pomp and ceremony of Wicca is you know not a million miles off that of Catholicism so there was something familiar in that sort of having this familiar ritual that you go through and um, you know, the kind of transformation of, you know, mundane objects into representations of the elements and of the goddess and God. There was a lot in that that really spoke to me of what religion was to me. And yet at the same time, it was almost like a perversion of it, like a, a kickback against the things that I saw as being completely wrong with the religion that I had sort of been accidentally raised in. But then, I mean, when I came back to, I had a bit of a slump then, and when I came back to spirituality again in my kind of early to mid twenties, I, um, again, you know, I wasn't really interested in Christianity. And this is not to say that I am now, um, because I, you know, I didn't carry that dogma with me. I never integrated it. I wasn't interested in the, in, in the figures and the mythology in the Bible. It just, it never clicked with me. It never made sense to me. So it wasn't something I've thought about. I just didn't really think about the fact that I had been raised Catholic and that this had been my kind of foundational uh, religious experience. And it's really only been, been in the past, like maybe three to five years that it's kind of, yeah, maybe four years that it's kind of dawned on me that, you know, that, that background is there and those early experiences, they really are very formative. And I, I'm, I'm never going to be Christian. I think I can pretty safely say that it just, like I say, it's never made sense to me. It's not something that clicks with me whatsoever. And, um, even the idea of a kind of personal monotheistic God yeah, it doesn't quite sit right, you know, like I, I'm agnostic about like what may be outside of our perceivable universe for sure. And I'm always willing and, and ready and wanting to have conversations with people who have beliefs that are different to mine about that and to talk to them about their experiences and what has led them to have that faith. I'm absolutely fascinated in that and I definitely hold kind of a strong agnosticism about what that could be. Uh, and I'm always coming back to my own experience, my own experience in sacred space and through meditation to explore and think about and reassess uh, what 
I feel is actually happening and what is happening when I'm attempting to uh, connect with divinity. Um, but you know, it's safe to say that that's never going to be something I'm going to return to in any way. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those, I, I don't feel that I'm going to be one of those people who was raised Christian, rebelled and then came back. It's, it doesn't have that draw for me. But I definitely, when I started to have very strong religious experiences at my altar, um, maybe like four years ago, they started to get, you know, get stronger and stronger. And first it was quite like the strong experiences were quite Morrigan, you know, oriented. And then I just started to have more general ones. And um, a couple of different things resonated with me as, as ways to express or explore that. And, you know, one of the things that I'm still wanting to delve into more is Buddhism. That seems like an interesting framework for me. And, and some of the teachings definitely reflect some of my experiences. But I just had to work from my own from my own experience and from my own background. And there was definitely something about those moments sitting in the candlelit dark that evoked the, the church or the cathedral to me. And uh, the feeling that I had very strongly reminded me of that feeling of uh, the connection that I felt that I was having with God or divinity uh, in, in those moments, in those few and far between, I will say, but in those few moments where I did feel connected to something um, through my experiences in church. And um, I think this is just something that's worth thinking about. Like, I think it's worth paying attention to. And I, I've definitely talked about this a bit. Um, I know I've talked about it in Paving Your Own Path in that series, in that video series, where I was talking about symbols and the the power in symbols that you have been raised with. And sometimes you might want to let go of those and you don't want to incorporate them into your spirituality because your associations are negative. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes the associations are positive. And I think figuring out how to separate the two, I think is really valuable. And I feel like I'm finally getting to the point where I'm seeing that. I'm, I'm learning to separate the really just awful associations that I developed around the Catholic Church. And I mean, I could talk for days <laughs> about um, just the horrors of the Catholic Church in Ireland. Uh, it's been so damaging so damaging for for most of us i would say um and certainly for many of us and in my generation in particular there is a real kickback against um the sort of lack of separation of church and state and uh i you know um the 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 changes that have been happening with the abortion referendum and with the uh, gay marriage referendum have been uh, absolutely just they've changed the country and things are changing but there's you know I like I say I could talk for days <laughs> about all of my problems with the Catholic Church um but I think it's only really now that I'm finally starting to be able to separate that from just what those formative experiences were and the positives of those formative experience and experiences and I even had for example um one kind of strange experience which I could have framed as being completely negative in that um, our school organized a religious retreat every year. And uh, most of the time they were quite, almost like non-denominational to be fair. They were quite almost new agey actually a lot of the time, which was quite nice. But then in my final year of school, the, the organization that they got to you know run the retreat um, were some, basically they were evangelical American Christians and just everything that you can imagine that came with that. And it was very like their whole, like it, it was bizarre. It was, it was kind of, I've never seen anything in my life apart from that day that showed me how cults operate and how people get sucked in to, you know, by charismatic voices and get sucked in by particular discourses and that people can learn how to push certain buttons and have really dramatic results um, as a result of, of using that manipulation. It was a very disturbing experience. Sociologically speaking, it was fascinating. Um, and essentially, like this group of young people who were um, all probably, they were probably youth pastors. I seem to remember that they were all American and um, they essentially reduced our entire class of 75 girls to tears in the church after they had given their sort of day of, you know, going on about Jesus and God and love and, and probably repentance and I don't know what, but it was all focused around self-love. 
And I remember being so angry with the way that they were manipulating the, the, the dearth, the absolute lack of self-love that teenage girls can have towards themselves. And that they were absolutely manipulating that into this attempt to convert us and to make us find Jesus. I think it's safe to say I have a little bit less rage towards them today because I have a better understanding of where they were coming from and they were probably indoctrinated in a very similar way and they probably believed wholeheartedly everything that they were saying. Um, but it was it was fascinating and scary to behold that they, like, like I say, dissolved an entire 75 strong group of, of young women to tears. Um, in a church when we were kind of segregated and told to pray and that was when everyone just started to break down. Um, but I did have a strong religious experience at that time and I remember thinking, I've been manipulated into this but I'm still having, it still seems to be opening something up in me to having a religious experience. And at that point in my life, I was so strongly pagan. I was not gonna be converted to Jesus. It was not gonna happen. It wasn't gonna work on me, basically. Um, and I don't know if it worked on anybody on, in a permanent sense. I, I, not that I, not anyone I know, but I didn't have a chance to ask. It wasn't really something we talked about afterwards either. Um, certainly outside of my close friend group. But I, in that moment, I called out to the goddess and I, I was going through something at that time, which again, you know, we're a bunch of 17, 18 year old girls and we're about to undertake some of the most important examinations of our lives. And of course, there's a lot of, you know, emotional turmoil going on. So of course we all have our own stuff that they were able to kind of push our buttons and, and, and have that emotional reaction. Um, and I did have that emotional reaction and I did have a very kind of profound um, spiritual experience in that moment, a feeling of, of love and acceptance, but it was all for me in my mind, it was the goddess, not Jesus. Uh, and I thought that was very interesting. And it really just, part of that experience was being in the church. And part of that experience was listening to uh, the kind of indoctrinating words of these evangelical Christians. And it was just a matter of being able to take that on and, and take on the feelings that they were evoking in me, but then, you know, feeling comfortable enough to take my own interpretation, to put my own spin on it, and to open myself up to the feelings that it evoked in me without judgment and without feeling like I had been tricked or manipulated. And this really reminds me of, um, so you, if you're American, you may not know who this is, but there is um, a British uh, kind of mentalist, um, hypnotist kind of guy. I can't think of the, the correct word from like, essentially he started out as a magician and now he does these very convoluted TV programs. Uh, and his name is Darren Brown. Um, if you don't know who he is, you can have a little Google. Um, so I went through a phase of being fascinated by Darren Brown because I suspect that like 90% of what he does in his TV programs is just, you know, acting, like that he just actually gets actors in. Like, I don't really believe that he is psychologically manipulating everyone in the way that he says he is. But I went through a phase of being fascinated by him and his program because I was trying to figure out, you know, to what extent was he psychologically manipulating people? To what extent did he have a unique power to do that? Because I find that very interesting, that idea that somebody might be able to have that kind of hold on people and be able to manipulate our emotions. And uh, I think the, the episode that fascinated me most, there's other episodes that I actually could talk about as well, but we'll talk about this one right now. Um, in this regard, that fascinated, fascinated me most in this regard was an episode where he looked for the least religious person he could find and the most logically minded, etc. She was a scientist, a physicist, I believe, and he decided he was going to um, evoke uh, a religious experience in this woman, like a Christian, a kind of very, very traditional Christian religious experience of, you know, experiencing the, the love of God. And I, in this, in this instance, I was fairly convinced by what happened, really only because at the end of the show, it seemed like the woman involved was actually kicking back at him a bit. Otherwise, I would have just thought that she might, she was just an actress. Um, but it was at the end when she kicked back at him a bit that I thought, oh, I wonder if this is actually genuine. And it did seem to me like having experienced that kind of manipulation firsthand myself as well, I thought, well, yeah, I'm sure that this is possible to evoke. So he did this whole thing where he set up, he talked to her about her father, so he set up the kind of father figure thing. They were sitting in a church and he did various things where he just 
set her up to have and like kind of supposedly hypnotized her so that when she would stand up that she would have this experience and you know while I was watching it I was like yeah yeah okay yeah, she's just acting because you know she stood up at the end and then had this kind of revelatory experience and at the very end of the show he invites them on and talks to them about their experience and he basically he wanted her to it seemed like he wanted her to say to him like yeah okay like he explained to her what he had done and how he had manip manipulated her and I think he was looking for some sort of response of oh yeah like this has really shown just what a sham religion is and how you know just you can just evoke this experience on me and it's not real and the woman now whether or not she was acting I don't know but the woman said to him and I'll always remember this I don't remember the exact words but she said something along the lines to him of yes you might have manipulated me and you might have evoked that reaction in me yourself as opposed to it being you know some sort of like human-like external god but she said but then she said people have religious experiences all the time through different ways and most of the time they are brought on by something they are evoked by an external stimulus right um some people when they listen to like sacred music they will suddenly have this uh, conversion experience and if it's sacred music or if it's being in nature if it's you know we don't tend to question that so much it we see that as a vehicle that has brought them to god that has let jesus into their heart and she said you know why can't this just be that experience for me you know what's to say that you didn't just create a channel for me to experience something that is actually somehow real in some way real and I found that really fascinating I really really loved that and I think I, that is often the way that I see things and my perception is like probably offensive to some people in terms that it's offensive to uh, Christians or to people who have very specific religious beliefs that they believe are correct and true and this is the one way and Jesus is the one way and you know my understanding of these all just being cultural interpretations is probably offensive to some people and um, that they're they don't want necessarily them to tell me their experience and me to go, okay, so you have this experience of divinity and, and these this is your cultural framework, so this is how you interpreted it. Um, but that is just so strongly what I believe that it's I I can't see I can't see beyond that. And and to me that it just it's just so apparent. And um that just really brings me back to just finding the value in my own spiritual religious roots and my own early experiences and thinking, well, just because I never got anything, you know, long term out of Christianity, just because it's not like I'm never going to find Jesus, Jesus isn't going to be a thing for me, me and he are just, you know, we don't, you know, we never clicked. Uh, just because that's not going to be a part of my life um, doesn't remove the value of those experiences that I had in, in a Catholic church, in cathedrals, in, you know, in the context of particular kinds of worship. Uh, those experiences in my mind are still very very real and they set up a pattern for how I was going to have those experiences later down the line. I developed certain kind of triggers or associations and things that would make me feel that again and you know sometimes when I'm feeling really spiritually lost I go to cathedrals. I, I go to sacred spaces particularly catholic um spaces are particularly evocative to me um even though i never did develop a, a major relationship with the virgin mary uh, being in cathedrals and churches that have shrines to her is just uh, it can be so evocative for me because it just reminds me it brings me back to that those first times when i started to feel when i started to open up that channel to something whatever whatever divinity is, whatever it is, whatever the experience is that we have when we have those moments of, of uh, yeah, the breaking open of the heart. So yeah, I think that's just about everything that I wanted to say today about this. I think I've pretty much covered all my bases. I did have a couple of things in mind that I wanted to bring up. And there's probably more that I could say about this, but I feel like maybe all of the components of what I've just said, I you know, they've come up in different videos I've mentioned it it's not like I've never talked about the fact that I was raised Catholic or or the fact that I have had experiences that have reminded me of of my prior experiences in churches this is all something this is all stuff that I have brought up again and again but I just really felt called to talk about it in a more uh, in-depth way in just one specific video and just um just riff on where I'm at right now with that because it is an important thing for me right now it's um 
increasingly important to me to acknowledge and embrace those roots and to embrace like maybe even going forth I'm going to start thinking about like the symbolism I, I never embraced any of the symbolism of my Catholic upbringing but it is still very powerful to me and I feel a lot of the time like I don't have access that I'm not allowed to use those symbols um even though I definitely would have disagreed with that in my own paving your own path series I probably would have very strongly said you know own your own religious symbols if they have meaning to you if it's not hurting anyone else then you know do it go for it um and that's something that I have explored a little bit before and I would be interested in exploring again um using prayer beads for me has always been very much tied in with the idea of rosaries and I have at one point I did start making a rosary for myself um Unfortunately, I don't still have the rosary that I had as a child. I got rid of it when I was a teenager. Um, and I don't know how I would feel about using that. I, I, I'd be curious. I would love to hold the, that rosary in my hands again, even though I didn't really use it really at all. It, it was representative of, of a particular time in my life when I was, you know, doing my first, taking my first communion and, you know, uh, doing my confirmation. Um, it would be very interesting to me to hold those, that rosary in my hands again and see how it makes me feel and, and how much, I think how little I've changed in the last 20 years. I think that's one of the, the strange things about it really is that when you remember so viscerally these experiences that you had, just snippets, just moments, um, and I was only seven, eight, nine years old, and yet I still feel the same way now. Like I, those experiences are not so different to what I experience now sometimes at the altar and I, I feel like having that those ro that rosary in my hands again would really just bring me back to something that is actually very long ago but also very familiar and something that never left me and that I just had to find a better framework to interpret it through something that wasn't going to just clash for me something that I wasn't going to have just terrible negative associations with and that was just, just going to make more sense mythologically um like I say because the figures of Christianity just didn't quite click for me just didn't make sense so yeah I'm gonna leave it there because I sense that this is gonna be a long one <laughs> I sense I've been talking for a while uh, but yeah I'd love to know about your experiences in your backgrounds um, in your kind of religious histories uh, what traditions you were raised in and to what extent you have had to maybe just brush them off completely I think people who are more indoctrinated than I was a lot of the time it's a much bigger struggle to pull away from the negative associations of that and and then it's not really something that you can so readily embrace the good of again. It's it, it's much more difficult, I think, and, and probably takes a lot more time to be able to separate the two when you've had a lot of traumatic experiences surrounding that, that religious upbringing, if it's something that really was very negative for you. Whereas for me, it was much milder. Um, and yeah, just not something that I had to really struggle to break away from in any, in such a serious way. But yeah, I would love to know your experiences and I hope this video was interesting and helpful to you as usual and I will talk to you again soon.